There's something oddly satisfying about removing paint from old furniture, and what I found under all this paint did not disappoint. I recently purchased this antique four-drawer dresser for $45 from a local Facebook marketplace listing. This style of furniture was common in America during the early part of the 20th century, and based on materials used, as well as other clues, I would estimate this dresser to be around 100 years old. Although many of these pieces don't have much character, they were built well and were workhorses for many families during most of the 20th century. My goal for this dresser is to remove all the paint and create a clean but primitive look as if this dresser had been found after 100 years of daily use. I would imagine this old dresser being the perfect fit for an old cabin somewhere or maybe in a house from the same era. A place where a few more dings and scratches will only add to its character. So then what's the point of going through all the trouble to refinish a piece like this? I've been waiting for the right project and the right time to share a special story from my own life. When I was in the fourth grade, our teacher would take the entire class on hikes through the woods he teaches how to identify birds, plants, and trees. It was those early experiences that taught me to understand and appreciate all the beautiful things in nature. I probably didn't learn much that year, but I did learn one of the most valuable lessons in life. Books are a great resource for information on just about any topic, but until you surround yourself with the things that you wish to learn about, you may never truly appreciate those things. But that's just the beginning of the story. To remove the paint on this dresser, I'll apply the chemical stripper with a disposable chip brush. My hope is, as you're watching, that you'll think of someone who had a positive impact on your own life. Someone who may have even taught you basic skills to improve your craft. It's not necessary to remove all the paint with the chemical stripper. What remains can be removed with the various scraping tools. Occasionally I enjoy adding a few challenges in my videos. So in this video, the challenge is to identify the movie playing in the background. And if for some that's too easy, then maybe you can identify the tape in the cassette player. Years later, in college, while I was preparing for a career in healthcare, I took courses such as advanced biology, chemistry, microbiology, zoology, and several others. Those courses would never make me an expert in any field, but they did give me a greater understanding and appreciation for those things that I learned back in the fourth grade. As I continued slowly peeling back the layers of paint, I discovered something natural and beautiful. As I continue thinking about my own story, 
I imagine all the unique stories that others could share if given the chance. I'll continue removing the paint with a variety of scraping tools. While the chemical stripper is still activated, I'll use some of these smaller tools to remove the paint from the detailed areas. Removing the paint with smaller tools can sometimes prove to be difficult and other times oddly satisfying. Sharing this experience with you requires hours of preparation. So if you'd like to show support for my small business, then I'd love for you to join the channel. It's free and only requires a few seconds of your time, but it would mean a lot to me. During this part of the project, there's a lot of moving around between scraping and sanding, but the goal remains the same and that is to remove all of the old finishes. I'll start by sanding everything with 150 grit sandpaper, then move up to 220 grit sandpaper for the final finishes. This dresser is filthy and there's paint everywhere, so I'll disassemble some of these pieces and sand every inch possible. I recently had someone suggest that scraping furniture like this is one of the worst things that you can do when refinishing old furniture. This dresser is mostly solid wood and scraping a furniture piece like this, if done right, causes little to no damage. There are professionals who may take a more cautious approach, but keep in mind that most of the furniture pieces that I work on were mass produced and these days are a dime a dozen. As expected, the top of this dresser is a thin layer of veneer. It's always good to be mindful of that when using a power sander. But a lot of furniture manufactured closer to 100 years ago had a much thicker layer of veneer as you can see here. At the time, many of the sawmills did not have the capability to cut veneer much thinner than that. In the fourth grade, at just 10 years old, I did not understand just how quickly life passes by. It was a lesson I would learn thousands of times during my years as a paramedic. I could not have imagined that almost 30 years later, my small business would revolve around working with wood from the species of trees that I had learned to identify at that young age. Just the other night, I picked up the phone and decided to call my fourth grade teacher. I explained to him the project that I was working on. I also mentioned my recent walk through the woods 
and how it brought back so many wonderful memories from the fourth grade. We certainly had some good laughs over some of those memories, but the main reason for calling my fourth grade teacher was to say thank you, Dad, for all those things that you taught me over the years. I recently made the decision to walk away from my career in healthcare to spend more time with this newfound passion. My hope is that one day I will have children of my own and I can share with them all the wonderful things that my father taught me. It was difficult at first trying to wrap my head around the idea of staining a piece to the best of my ability only to come back and scuff sand it with a sanding block. But a primitive, worn look is the vision for this project. Like if a child walked up and drew on this dresser with a crayon, I wouldn't even be bothered. Those are often the furniture pieces in our homes with the most stories. I want this dresser to survive for another 100 years, so I'll apply this wood polish and conditioner to all the drawers. I'll finish this project by spraying on several layers of clear shellac. My name is Barry, and I hope you'll consider sharing memories of your father in the comments for this video. And for all the mothers watching, I hope you'll enjoy this video next. <laughs>